As vehicles become increasingly more complex, ADOS calibrations are a huge opportunity for your shop. But where do you start? The most important first step is finding the right partner. When you work with Aztec, you get a true partner, dedicated to providing your business with the right tools, technology, and training you'll need to perform all dynamic and static calibrations. Aztec is the trusted calibrations partner for hundreds of businesses across the U.S. and Canada. They will build a customized roadmap for your shop to bring all calibrations in-house. Hey there, it's Jason Stahl with another episode of Under the Radar. And today's episode is sponsored by our friends at Repairify. Today I have two very special guests, James Rodas, who is the Process, Procedure, and Training Manager at OEM Calibration and the Woodhouse Auto Family, and we have Andy Hipwell, who is the Manager of OEM Calibration. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. So, James, I met you at a conference one time. I think we were at the elevator, and you introduced yourself and told me you work for OEM Calibration and what you do. And... It was very interesting because, you know, the name, OEM Calibration, that's the name of the calibration company. And I asked why that name was, and you said, well, we do things the OEM way, and that's the only way we do it. So explain a little bit about OEM Calibration and who they are. Uh, you know, we're a calibration company that does it the way that, that the dealerships are supposed to be doing it. Um, making sure there's level ground, making sure there's room, sourcing the correct materials to do the calibration with. Uh, following the workshop manual to a T, you know, it, it kind of started by we were using an outside company and they're they're doing them on unlevel ground over drains, um, you know, outside in a in a case and, you know, just kind of said, hey, th this isn't the right way to do this. And, you know, we need to explore other options and kind of started just to use internally uh, to cover our liability and has since grown to, I believe, I think eight cities now. Um, all by word of mouth, you know, we have shops in other cities and states calling us and, hey, can you can you come into my market? And uh, we go explore the market and, you know, see if it's conducive for us to go there. What is your total market area? What states do you cover? Nebraska, Iowa, Kansas City, Kansas, Missouri. Um, I think that's it at the moment. It's, uh, South Dakota a little bit, and um, but multiple locations in those states. Okay, so when you started out, you were just calibrating the, the vehicles for Woodhouse Auto Family, but then word got out that you were doing a great job, and so it expanded. And now, I mean, how many body shop customers would you say you have? Wow, uh, easy 150, couple, I'd guess. Yeah, a couple 200. hundred. Wow, okay. So if a body shop were to call you and you go out to the shop and you realize that they don't have the proper environment for a calibration to be done, do you take that car back or do you determine that before you go out there or how does that work? So the first time that we go there, we're going to see what they have for space, uh, level floor, you know, just see re what requirements we could meet. And maybe we could do, you know, four or five brands at that location, but maybe these specific brands have to come back to us because the, the requirements just aren't met. Okay. There is a prominent ADAS expert and industry speaker out there who is fond of saying if you have a mobile diagnostics company coming to your shop and doing the calibration in your parking lot you need to fire them true or false true and why is that there's no manufacturer that said well one you got to have level ground i i promise you parking lots are designed to let water roll off so they're they're not level enough uh, two, you know, sun's a factor. I mean, there's just so many factors that come into play there. If anybody is doing a calibration outside, outside of doing a, a drive, uh, they shouldn't be doing it. I mean, period. And if you're the shop owner, you need to know that well enough to say, hey, this isn't getting done right. Um, I need to find another source. And you as a shop owner have every right to ask those questions with any vendor, whether it be an ADAS calibration or a PDR guy, you know what I mean? I mean, just, you know, know, know who you're working with and the, the quality of work that they are doing and is, is being done the right way. And Andy brought up a good point. You know, even if we're talking PDR, if your guy's drilling holes as the shop owner, that's kind of, to me, that's kind of your job to know that's happening and make sure that it doesn't happen, right? No different here. Correct. 
So I don't know if you guys were at the SEMA show last year in Las Vegas, but um, the big trend in calibration equipment was uh, this equipment's coming out that now can sort of offset uh, perhaps a floor that isn't perfectly level, uh, can help out with, you know, if you don't have the perfect lighting and whatnot. And there also, if you don't have the big slogan is, hey, you don't need all the space that necessary that they're, they're saying, like 60 by 40. Uh, if you're just doing forward facing calibrations, uh, you don't need all that space. Uh, and this, these machines are also uh, taking the skill out of it in a way where you don't have to be a, you know, an electronics troubleshooting expert uh, or an 8S expert to operate this machine necessarily. Um, do you follow that trend and what, how do, what do you think about those statements? I, I disagree. So we have one of those machines because we have to have it for one of the lines. And for the line that we have it, it is the approved equipment. And we only use it for that line. We, we bought no other targets. And, you know, here's a machine that you bring in like an airplane and it turns green. Well, you can still move it around some and it stays green. Uh, we had it off, you know, roughly that much. Uh, we set it where it said it was perfect. We then measured like we always do and prove that it was off. And I, us as a company, we said, well, it's still off. You know, it's, if we're talking about a game of millimeters, that's a lot, that's a lot of millimeters. Uh, and then also, you know, we, we did go out to some training on, on this brand and the machine said it calibrated fine. Well, we had three inches of difference from one side to the other. Does the machine make up for it? I don't know until manufacturers say these machines are good we have a hard time just us believing that that's adequate uh right wrong or indifferent i'm not an engineer i just know at least our company motto is we're going to follow that that workshop manual to a t and you know we're asking shops that are still struggling with repairing cars right you know is is what we see right that's what we hear in all these meetings we go to so now we're asking them to be more precise than they're having to be on cars that they can't repair right. Let let us be the experts. Me and other people in the field, we eat, sleep, and you know, dream about this stuff. We understand it more than a shop owner that is wearing five different hats and then trying to figure out what needs calibrated and how do I calibrate it right. And, you know, all these machines are saying, you know, you need these three calibrations. Well, there's usually four or five that are needed. You know, it's 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 not an exact science. You need somebody that eats and sleeps this stuff to understand it and make sure that it's right in my mind. That's a good point, James. You know, um, uh, I think there was a point made that, you know, the more calibration to do you do, like anything, the better you're going to get at it. And you guys eat, sleep, and dream this stuff. So that's interesting. So guys, tell me your opinion on this. There's this thought out there that the calibration center, the standalone calibration center business model will be obsolete. Um, someday because the equipment is evolving to the point where more and more shops are will be able to do the calibrations in-house also they're saying vehicles someday may self-calibrate is this fanciful you know uh, future talk is or is this so far in the future that you feel that your business model and your revenues are protected for a long time i think that this is pretty far off to the future but um, I think what could possibly play out is maybe some cars being self-calibrated, but there's always going to be, at least in our opinion, um, a human element having to be involved somewhere. There has to be some sort of proof, validation that it has been calibrated. Because end of the day, not only does it boil down to the customer's safety, I mean, when this shop releases this car to the customer, not only do they want to make sure that their body repair is correct, I mean, the, the electrical on the side of things need to be correct. You know, you need a, there needs to be some sort of verification that these safety systems for automatic emergency braking and stuff like that are, in fact, working like they're supposed to. Because heaven forbid, if this person gets into an accident a month from now and things go to court, um, I'm pretty sure that body shop's going to want to have some sort of proof and verification, a screenshot, a scan of something to show that the system was most recently calibrated. So there's always gonna have to be some sort of, of verification in some way. And I think as more manufacturers are trying to go the route of actually making things harder 
you're actually needing passcodes now to talk to some of these modules, um, just to even, you know, scan them and talk to them. So I am, it's probably going to be a mix of both things. I think some brands are going to go a little bit um, more self-calibration, but even on a self-calibrated car, like even like a Tesla that self-calibrate, I mean, you can still go in there and find some sort of proof that it, maybe in the last 10 minutes it, it calibrated. You know what I mean? You're still going to have to have that proof, that documentation to, again, just, just have that verification that, yes, it is calibrated. It did most recently calibrate. It, it was successful. Um, so again, you know, when you give that customer the keys to the car, that the automatic emergency braking, the parking sensors, the blind spot, all that stuff is functioning as it should. So again, you have that peace of mind that not, not only did you repair that car mechanically and structurally correct, you're giving them a safe, sound, secure car. And even on the other side of that, you know, say in 2026, they say, hey, everything self calibrates. You're still going to have 10 years of 2025s that are going to have to be dealt with. So you know, that there's some future here. You know, there was a manufacturer that on Friday said you had to calibrate a blind spot. On Monday, they said, nope, you don't have to calibrate it anymore. Well, six, nine months later, they come back and they say, hey, now we need you to do a validation check on that just to make sure that this is working right. So I agree with Andy. There's going to be some validation verifi verification checks that are going to have to be done. Um, and I, I think that's an okay thing because if we're going towards self-driving cars, I want to know this stuff's going to work. I mean, that's just kind of where I'm at. If I'm going to be on the road, I want to know that the car next to me was calibrated and working right. Yeah, you guys bring up a good point. I mean, let's just say a body shop in five years is finally comfortable doing their own calibrations and equipment has advanced. Well, you guys are still five years down the road with your expertise. Again, you live, eat, and breathe this stuff. Um, you're still the expert and you're far ahead of the learning curve. And by entrusting you to do the calibration, um, they are really minimizing their liability and going with a proven expert who knows what they're doing. You've been doing this for a long time. So the more years have passed, the more expertise you guys have and really the more, you know, stock you have, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yep. Tell me, guys, tell me about if you have an example of a problem that just you just couldn't figure out. You, you took a car in and you did everything right. And you did everything by the book. And there was just something. The calibration was not being done successfully or not completing. What was, do you remember that situation? What was the problem? There's a couple different ones. Um, so one was not really so much a calibration, but it was more of a module programming. Body shop replaced the module. Um, the calibrations went through fine for what we could do, but one of the modules that they replaced needed to be programmed. So we took our Mazda factory scanner, um, programmed it, and it just wouldn't take a program. Um, you know, started going through the diagnostic um, hoops, checking everything, checking wires, owning stuff out, making sure everything is properly communicating, talking to one another. All that stuff checks out fine. It just will never take a programming. It just just won't. Um, so we have relationships with uh, many manufacturers and dealers. So we, we called and talked to them, you know, um, talk to their master tax. You know, we're we're doing everything that, you know, they would do end of the day that we still got the car eventually to the dealer dealer got the car and doing the same thing we literally did still couldn't do them themselves so they had to send in a technical request to mazda corporate and say hey what's going on here um i think they ended up um writing a new program yeah they remote it into that technician's laptop and like manually wrote a program for this module to kind of overcome the hurdles of what was blocking this programming from successfully taking with this module so you come across um things like that every once in a while um calibrations on newer gms the lane cameras gm has some software issues with these 23 24 vehicles and Sometimes it just doesn't take the dynamic lane camera calibration and, it, you know, the system kind of just gets upset or angry, so to speak. Um, so you kind of go through additional hoops of, of reprogramming other modules to so that this module successfully communicates and talks now. So, um, you know, just like the body shop industry I and mean, this thing's ever evolving and changing, you know, when a manufacturer has a software glitches and issues, you know, it's a trickle effect. Eventually it, it comes into our world, you know, just like when the manufacturer comes out with a new bedside procedure for the body shop, you know, it's like, oh, now we can't use this for it, but we have to use these. I mean, it's the same thing. That's why it's it's ever evolving. So, you know, like, like you were saying earlier, I mean, 
be a master, be, be great at, at repairing a, a vehicle, but it's, it's daunting to be an expert and a master in the ADS world as well, because it's changing just as fast as the collision industry. So for a shop to keep up with both of those things at the same time, I mean, that's very, very difficult. So, you know, that's why we work with uh, shops to let us be the expert, let us take that burden off of your plate and try to create that relationship with one another. It, and I'm, I'm going to throw in that if a shop is doing this in-house, the guy that's doing it, this is what he should do. He shouldn't be putting on a quarter panel and then jumping into a calibration. It needs to be a guy that this is what he does. He understands it better than anybody else in that shop. And this is this is his gig. Um because again, you, you have to be a master at it, I feel, to make sure that everything's done right. Because, you know, a couple millimeters is too much in this world. I mean, in, in, in this sphere, at least, you know, we, we need to be perfect. That's, that's a good segue to my next question. For, for these all these calibration centers that you guys now have covering all these states, the em employees, the technicians there, did you find body technicians and turn them into calibration experts did you find guys that were already electronics pros? How did you find the 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 the, the manpower, the staff to 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 fill those shops? Well, just just like anybody, hiring is pretty difficult right now. <laughs> I mean, finding that right guy, that quality employee, is 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 harder than ever. But no, I mean, being a previous tech helps for sure. I mean, you got you know the basics and understanding. Mechanical so, tech. Yeah, mechanical not, tech, not, not body tech. Um, but, um, no, honestly, I think we kind of found a little bit of a, of a niche with guys that have a computer background, kind of almost like techie gamer type guys. They can build their own computers. They, you know, they understand that better than a guy like myself. And honestly, back here at home base, we do have, we have master techs that when there's issues, uh, you know, they can jump in remote in, talk with the techs. We do do monthly training with all of our techs across all of our our cities. Um, these guys, they, they hold a half hour, hour, you know, every month they're picking a different topic. You know, here's how to own wires. Uh, hey, here's what we're seeing in the field. Um, but like Andy said, it, it's the techie people. Um, we want the younger guys that understand the technology. Um, can I calibrate a car? Yes. I did three lines for years and we did it at a very high level. Could I do every brand? No, that's not not my bucket. But these young kids, they do a really good job. And Andy does a really good job of, you know, keeping everybody kind of, you know, in that nucleus so they understand what we're doing. And, you know, these guys, every time they do a calibration, Andy or one of his guys are reviewing all the photos that they send in and they're double checking to make sure, yep, this was done right. And if it wasn't, you know, we've had an occasional where, you know, Andy's had to say, hey, you know, that's not a good spot to do that. You're going to you can't do it there. You know, you're going to have to either take it back to home base or, you know, find a spot that, that fits a little better. So reviewing all the photos is, is a big part of what we do to make sure that every city is kind of staying on task. You said young guys, I, well, I wonder what the average age of these technicians is number one. And number two, are there any in interesting industries you pulled them out of? Like was, you said, you know, some were previous, you know, mechanical uh, technicians, but, any interesting industries, like did a guy come from the aerospace industry or with a mechanical engineering degree that was totally outside of collision or, or auto service? I'm going to say the, the average employee we have are, has no previous automotive experience at all. They have an interest. Yeah. You know, it might be maybe a hobby or, or they just might be a car enthusiast, but they previously have no automotive background at all. They were, you know, working at a, a nursery or customer service, you know, for some corporate company or something along those lines. But I will say probably 75% of them can build their own computer. Uh, they're just, that's, you know, they're gamers. Uh, so they kind of get that, that realm of it. Uh, but like Andy said, there's no specific place. Now back here at home base, we have a lot of guys that did come from a mechanical background. And those are the guys that are scrubbing the estimates because uh, the way we work is, you know, you send us the estimate and we go through it and we tell you what it needs as far as calibrations. Uh, and then we're going to supply you, uh, you know, when we're done, we're going to supply you with the documentation that kind of proves uh, the work that we did. 
And those are the guys that most of them have some kind of mechanical background, whether it's a master tech or, you know, they were tech five years or whatever. And uh, we have, we source a lot of them from within our company. Okay, guys, last question. You got an auto body shop today and they're befuddled by this ADAS and vehicle electronics and they are behind the curve and they haven't figured out a way to deal with it yet. And they're looking at doing it in-house they're looking at bringing in a mobile service or taking it to the dealer. What is your advice for the shop that perhaps is a little bit behind the curve now? They know they need to restore these safety systems for their customers, but they just don't know how. What is your advice for them? Call us. We'll come get her done for you. <laughs> uh, whatever it is, you have to believe in what you're doing. You know, if you're taking it to a dealer, you know, you have a great relationship. Great. Just know that it sometimes it's going to take a week to get in. Kind of what we hang our hat on is the way we source everything and the way we, we run as a business. If you call us on Tuesday at 10 a.m. and you need a calibration, our goal is to be there Tuesday and get the calibration done. Uh, we're not going to make you wait two or three days because, again, that's cycle time. And, you know, I'm, I'm not a big cycle time guy. It's, it's about the car takes what it takes to get done. But if we can save you a couple, two, three, four days, great. And, again, I believe a company like us, us specifically, does does it better than most dealerships do because, again, this is all we do. We're not putting in a transmission and then going to go do a calibration in the afternoon over a drain in a slope floor. Uh, you got to believe in who you're doing work with. Also, it's just uh, just know what you're getting. Okay, so let's just say I'm sending all my calibrations to a dealer. Um, know what you're getting. Um, well, I've done my own mystery shop with, um, dealers, um, across the country and I, I just call them up. I say, Hey, you know, I have a 2020 Toyota so-and-so I had somebody install my windshield. They're, they're telling me I need to have my lane camera re recalibrated. I don't know or not, you know, you, you tell me, I get people telling me no, yes, I get pricing from mild to wild. I mean, so just know what you're getting if you are going to the dealer, because so many times dealers aren't calibrating everything that should be calibrated. If you're going to go with a, um, an all-in-one machine, know its limitations. Okay, what is it good at? What is it not good at? If you're going with a mobile company, you know, like us, again, know what you're getting. You know, again, what are they good at? What are they not good at? What are you not getting? You know, just, again, you know, just vet your vendors and what you're doing. I mean, know what you're getting into. Know what, you know, if you want quality stuff and you want to know that you're every calibration that may be needed is getting done. Just, you know, know what you're getting, make sure it's getting done. And on that, for the love of donuts, if they just hand you a receipt and this is all the documentation you have, know you're probably gonna fail if you gotta go to court someday because you don't have enough documentation. You need proof and, you know, proof that is gonna win in a, in a lawsuit that this was done right. You know, when, when we're done, I don't know, we got somewhere around 30 photos, you know, screenshots of, you know, what version we're using, you know, it's just cover your butt. Great point, James. Thank you so much. Guys, I want to thank you for being on Under the Radar today. Great information. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks for, having, thanks for us. having us. Yep. I'm Jason Stahl. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching this episode of Under the Radar. For more episodes, visit bodyshopbusiness.com.